We live? I think it looks like we're live, man. It's Welcome, uh, everybody, to another episode of the Boost Dessert Smoke and Meats podcast, or jokingly referred to as BDSM. <laughs> <laughs> I'm your host, the Meat Viking, with my wonderful co-host. This is Professor Porkline. That's right. Today, uh, kind of going on a kick with what we've been doing the last few episodes, you uh, want to introduce us to some rum. Yeah, this this one's going to be near and dear to my heart. It was one of the other episodes we talked about with tequila, that one's also pretty close to my heart as well. But uh, the rum one, I feel like, is, is my favorite out of all because i mean i've i am an avid rum drinker so it's definitely something for me and i think it's something for everybody something about a good spiced rum it you know summertime you can do wintertime one of the drinks that i really like to do is rum and apple cider yeah Uh, and uh, cranberry is pretty good mm -hmm. um i feel like there's just a wide variety and that's that's the fun part about rum is that it's such a versatile spirit that you can mix it with a whole bunch of different things and it will come out pretty dang good. Mm-hmm. So, so uh, with this being your topic of choice, you got a safe word for us today? Uh, let's see. I think safe word we could, I'm going to try to stick away from stuff that might be mentioned numerous times. Uh, so let's, let's think, uh, um, Let's say Cuba. <laughs> Cuba works for me. Because it's pretty close. And I mean, I'm not going to mention Cuba too many times. So I think that would probably be a good idea. Plus, it's a pretty pretty close export anyway. So Right. So well, on the topic of Cuba, the cigar is not Cuban. In fact, it comes from Hardoras. And this is a Romeo La Julieta Havoc cigar. I have smoked some Romeo La Julietas before. I, I enjoy that, that brand. Mm-hmm. Now, there's a, a little interesting stuff about this one. It's from Hardoras, but it's got a Habana wrapper, and it's binded in Nicaraguan tobacco and then filled with Honduras and Nicaraguan tobacco. So you get, like, a real strong, like – feel it's not like uh some of the other cigars i like to smoke got a lot of flavor flavor to them like you can tell like this is like a natural flavor whereas this the way it is and with the way how it's been aged it's strong smooth and yet it kind of has like a coffee taste to it like a very nutty and coffee to okay coffee taste okay not a bad deal and uh, didn't you say that you had a second cigar that you were going to talk about briefly? Uh, we'll save that one for another episode. Um, essentially, when I was out buying liquor today, I went and I ordered two cigars with it. And not knowing until I got home, he gave me one of the correct cigars and then one that is not correct. So, but we'll talk about that next one when I can actually open it up and have a taste on it. Cause it's one I don't know. Okay. Fair enough. Well, uh, what do you got in your cup, man? You know, there's a lot of classic drinks you can do with rum and without a doubt, you've been on the rum and Coke kick. However, if I could have made this with the ingredients that they did not have, I would rather do it that way, but essentially I've just got a basic mojito today in my cup. Ah, the old mojito. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah so the mojito, definitely mint. Um, I make mine a little different. I, I try to stick to the traditional side of it and not really put so much sweet into it because the mint and the sugar that you put into it from the simple syrup is sweet enough. So a lot of people will put Sprite as their mixer, but yep. I usually just use seltzer or club soda See, because it cuts down on some of that stuff anyway. So, what I like doing, depending on what kind of season it is, whether it be like if I'm feeling raspberries, blackberries, or blueberries, I like to muddle that in with my mint. And then yeah. I don't, 
I don't put simple syrup in there. I just do lime juice, uh, rum, muddle the mint, muddle the um, whatever berry I chose, top that off with some Sprite when all that's done, and then I throw a couple of mint sprigs on there for garnish. Yeah, like I said, I mean, I try to stick to the traditional side of that and not do it too sweet because, again, I mean, with the uh, you're right with the f- and everything. I mean, that's got its own sugar essentially, anyway. So, yeah. uh, and I feel like a strawberry, a raspberry, blackberry. I've done a whole bunch of them in the over the years. They still, I mean, it tastes pretty dang good anyway because you're muddling in it anyway. Mm-hmm. The only thing that sucks sometimes is that the mint gets stuck with your straw, but. Um, yeah yeah so it's it's a that's a really classic drink you know i haven't had one in a while but it's starting to get warm again so i think it uh might be one of those ones i'll have later on but for me i'm switching it up just a tad i'm not doing coke i'm actually doing ginger so the old rum and ginger but it's the spiced rum i don't frequent the uh the silver too often but when you're doing your mojito did you use silver did you use uh, bacardi i went with uh, captain morgan silver spiced rum so so you put spice rum in that that's mm-hmm. usually not the one that you go for usually with that one you usually have your uh, silver just bacardi plain you know no extra additives to it so Th- the thing is though is that it's been quite some time since i've had rum that you know, going to like a comfort brand. My favorite Captain Morgan that I've ever had was the Captain Morgan tattoo, which I can never find anywhere anymore. It was that dark spiced rum. Yeah. But I also know generally you can't go wrong with Captain. So I was like, Let's do a silver rum versus a white rum. So I wanted a little bit of extra spice in there in case I end up making something with this or not. I wonder if they took the tattoo off because I'm pretty sure I, I might have seen it at my liquor store, but um, I remember in college drinking that stuff with Dr. Pepper. Yep. And it would taste really good for some odd reason. No idea why, but. Uh, you're the one who got me hooked on to the berries and cream with Captain Morgan. Yes. Yep. The Dr. Pepper berries and cream. Mm-hmm. So I. I don't know. Next time I'm in the liquor store, I'll have to see if they've got any tattoo in there. I, yep. You're right. I, I don't feel like I've seen it in a while. So mm-hmm. maybe they discontinued, but I felt like it was a pretty good product. Yeah, I thought so too. But you know, we're two people. And <laughs> I hate to say it, but I'm often told I'm wrong about a lot of things. Well, uh, I think jumping started right into it, you know, we've been talking about some stuff previously. We talked about the whiskey, we talked about the tequila and, and really what is made, what it's made from, but rum is still going to be distilled. But the cool thing about rum is that it's made from sugar cane. Okay. And, uh, made from sugar juice. Mm. Now, depending on the recipe, you can also use molasses, which is a byproduct of that sugar stuff anyway. So it's really cool to see the differences between the, the liquors that we've kind of talked about. You know, you've got the grains, you've got the, the plants, you know, the agave plant. Now you've got sugar cane. Um, you can basically distill just about anything if it's got the fermentable in it. Mm-hmm. So um, I've, I've looked at a couple. There's a, there's a YouTube channel, I think, that they say, will it distill? And they essentially just make whatever it is and say, hey, we're going to distill this. Oh, nice. So uh, not a shout out to that channel, but if you're bored and want to take a look, I, I couldn't even tell you if that's the name of it. Just look up Will It Distill, I guess, and it will still come out. But um, the really cool thing about the sugar is that it's easily producible. Um, and again, the, the sugar cane molasses, sugar cane juice uh, will, will give you different styles of that flavor that you'll have some of them will be a little bit more heavier others a little bit lighter but you might have some more fuller fuller ones Mm -hmm. so it's kind of cool how rum is different from from place to place uh when when you think of rum where do you think rum is is manufactured like what's your big thing uh there's two places that come to mind that's puerto rico or the caribbean well Puerto Rico is kind of in the Caribbean. Oh, oh. Think about it. <laughs> like I said, I've been told, I, been told I've been wrong a couple of times. 
whenever I thought about it, you're right. I think Puerto Rico, I think Jamaica, and then I also think Barbados. Okay. Those, those are my three places where I, where I think rum is made the most. And, and to be true or to be honest with you, I mean, Barbados has the, one of the oldest distilleries and i think mm-hmm. it goes back to like 1640 something maybe 1650s oh wow so i think that's when it was first mentioned and when it was when it's still part of that whole thing now um i have been to one in um tortilla or tortilla it's not tortillas tortilla but it's a british british virgin islands and um they it's called the uh uh what the hell is it called the Caldwell distillery Mm -hmm. and they consider themselves the oldest operating distillery for rum uh in the like west of wherever i i forget what they they mentioned but that was super cool to go i mean it's an old brick building they got the the pot still and everything outside and it and uh and they're fairly pre- reasonably priced too. I think for you to buy a bottle of their 10 year, it's only like 20 bucks. And then they have samples where it can get you four shots of, of rum because they have different ones. They've got a lighter rum, a 10 year run, a spice rum for a dollar. Oh, like wow. You go up there and you just be like, hey, man, here's, here's a buck. And they'll pour it out and tell you everything about it. Wow. You know, and um, like, if you guys remember from our whiskey episode, Generally, when something's aged for a couple of years, like that 10-year rum, you're looking to have a price tag with that. And so if you can get that for like 20, 30 bucks, that's a steal. Yeah, I actually brought, I think, um, not the maximum amount that I could put on that cruise ship, but close to it. I think I spent about 60 bucks or 80 bucks worth of rum. And they had small little pint ones and they had the liter bottles and that was super cool to drink for the, the following year. Right. <laughs> um, but if you look at just the dis- distillers now, uh, your Puerto Rican one, I mean, Bacardi, they distill, I think it's like a hundred thousand gallons, some stupid amount, you know? Yeah. But it's, it's Bacardi though. And they have more uh, advertising. People think Bacardi, you know, Bacardi and diet. So but uh, yeah, Barbados is probably one of the, the oldest ones. And then Jamaica, I mean, Appleton rum, I can remember drinking that stuff and a little rough, but uh, Appleton Estate. And so there's, there's some pretty good ones that are out there. Don't think I've ever had a Jamaican rum. Well, man, you got to go to Jamaica. Uh, not like something you can buy stateside. Yeah, I think you can. Um, Next time you go to the liquor store, look up Appleton. Okay. It comes in a normal bottle. Mm-hmm. It's fairly priced. I mean, it's probably like 20 bucks or something like that. Yeah, yeah. But don't plan on going outside the country. <laughs> don't want to get it from the source with Jamaica. Yeah, I mean, if I'm going to Jamaica, I'm bringing back more than a bottle of rum. <laughs> so, uh, I did a little research because I know I've talked about some of the rum stuff, you know, with Gosling rum in previous episodes, but I didn't realize that uh, rum essentially was uh, a big trade in the slave trade, especially within the American colonies. Really? Yeah. So slaves were brought from Africa and they were traded to the West Indies for molasses. Um, and then that molasses was made into rum. Huh. So, and then they actually made the rum and then traded to Africa for more slaves with that rum. <laughs> so, huh. Yeah. It's, I didn't realize that that was a big thing within America. Like, I, I knew slave trade and everything like that. You know, I didn't realize that rum was such a commodity and that it was more of a, uh, trading slash currency, especially for slaves. Like, hey, you, we're going to trade you some molasses and then we're going to mess with that, make it into a drink, and then we're going to trade you for rum <laughs> just oh. to get more slaves. 
world was a weird place back then. Yeah, definitely is. Um, I, I also heard of a couple other ones too, where since it's made from molasses, uh, that there's a rum called Blackstrap. Um, but it's kind of not really considered the, the rum that you think it is. It's more of just the dark rum because of the molasses and the sh of how dark that is. So it's basically the residue. Uh, so which I've never heard of that. I never heard of the black strap rum. And some of the other research I looked up, the, the one guy was basically saying it's not anything. Uh, it's basically what we would consider the dark rum. Okay. Huh. So, but the one thing that I did uh, also take a look at too was there's this stuff called uh, tafia. And that essentially is just um, a low quality spirit. It's not even considered rum because it's made from all the impurities of the molasses and like the residue of sugar cane. So it's not considered a true rum, but it's coming from that product, uh, which probably tastes pretty crappy, I would think, right? I mean, you're using the bottom of the barrel of stuff. I mean, you know how I feel about cheap drinks. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'll give it a shot, but I don't expect myself to like it. That's for sure. Yeah, that's true. Get that 151. <laughs> Such a shame they had to stop selling that. Did they? Where I live, yeah. Oh, man. You're getting hosed. Yep. Even outside of the ridiculous proof from it, I just really like the flavor. That's true. Yeah. You really don't need a lot for it to do anything to you, you know? Well, not only that, but like, you know, one thing I like to do, and I don't do it so much anymore, is uh, cut up some like lemon, lime, and then take a couple of chicken breast and throw some rum in a Ziploc bag after I've seasoned my chicken breast with some like Cajun seasonings and then let that sit for like a day or two and get like rum marinated chicken. Yeah. That sounds pretty good. Yeah. What, uh, what rum do you, do you use then? Do you just do you spice rum? I do spice rum. I used to do 151 with that because it's got such a unique flavor and yeah. all the alcohol, you know, it's going to burn off, but I've used, um, I've actually used coconut rum before and I don't think I would do that one again, but I would go back and I would do um, like a white rum or a silver rum. In theory, you would think that coconut rum would work, right? Like if you did maybe a coconut crust or something, or you did something where it was like a, uh, like a coconut -y something, but I maybe. can totally see why that coconut rum didn't work. Yeah. Maybe if I were to do it with like something that's already got coconut in it, like a coconut shrimp and marinate the shrimp in that, that I would have had better success. But I think I just had such a plethora of flavors going on in that dish that it just kind of threw it off. Wasn't I'm to, bad. I'm trying to think maybe something like Indian, you know, where they have a lot of that coconut, the masala, something along those lines to cut or maybe just kick up the spice level with it and have that creaminess. So I could totally see why it could work, but I could see why maybe it didn't work. Yep. Yep. So the, uh, the one thing that I do like about rum, uh, when it's, when it's a little different from the whiskeys and from the tequilas, uh, you know, with that one, you have to get all the sugars out of your materials. Mm -hmm. But the fact that it's coming from sugar cane, I mean, it's already present in that raw material. So the right. cool thing about rum is that it usually retains more of that original raw material flavor than some of those other spirits like the bourbons, whiskeys, and whatnot. So hmm. I think that's probably another reason why I liked it that much. Plus, when I was younger, I'd always drink rum and Coke, and it tastes like vanilla. And to me, it was just super easy to, to drink. So. Right. But I think this helps out with the 
yeast, you know, and the aging and the fermentation and all that stuff uh, makes it a, a lot easier to, to kind of distill overall. So mm. I, th I think just like the tequila episode when we were talking about, you know, the different colors, uh, if you have your white rum or your normal rum, that's the stuff that's not really um, aged very long and it's not really aged in any barrels, or if it is, it's not aged in any uh, charred barrels. So that's where you kind of, you get the clear rum from. I actually have a couple different bottles. So my first one is a clear one. It's a white rum. It's called Bayou Rum. Ooh. Throw that in there, it's from Louisiana. So the other cool thing about rum too, is that if there's any way that you can have the, um, the climate, to grow sugar cane, you could totally grow, you can totally make rum. So, okay. Uh, we've seen it uh, over in India. They have the same thing, but typically Caribbean. But yeah, so the Bayou rum, not a bad deal. Pride of Louisiana. Huh. Hence why it gets the name. Hmm. But you can totally see how that's white. Oh, yeah. That makes sense really all the way around. Yeah. So. Pair that with some alligator tail. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> you think I'm fucking joking, dude? Alligator's delicious. I have had alligator before. There's a place about two hours away from where I'm at that will sell you alligator, and they catch it right off the river. Mm. So, there's a a famous restaurant chain. And like each one of them does something different down in the Texas area called Papados. Yeah. Yep. It's the first place I had alligator. And I'll tell you what, we'll eat alligator again when available. <laughs> Next time you come down to Texas, whenever that will be. Dude, I don't care. If, if someone is like on the street, they're selling fake Rolexes, but real alligator, I will buy a fake Rolex and real alligator meat. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. So uh, with other different rums, though, it's definitely part of the aging thing. Now, I mentioned the Jamaican rums uh, and the Jamaican rums, they always add uh, caramel after the aging. That's why they kind of get that nice, darker flavor with their rums. Uh, some other ones, though, typically get it from the barrels that they're in or from the spices that they put in. Um, the cool thing is that rum is pretty good when it comes to uh, blends and are usually aged within that five to eight years. You can get those 10 year ones too. Um, and the alcohol content is typically good enough to be within that uh, 40% to God, I mean, you got 151. I mean, some of the rums that I drink are 92 proof so they're they're up there you know but anywhere from 80 i mean captain morgan's usually what 70 is it 70 oh, 80. Captain Morgan. no they have an 80 proof but the normal captain morgan is lower it's only i think it's 35 proof oh, okay but i usually go with that one if i don't buy a captain it's the admiral nelson or the sailor jerry's because it's about the same price but the higher alcohol content so oh, sailor Jerry. i think sailor jerry's i've got it it's 92 admiral nelson i think is 80 something you got a oh, story about sailor jerry there i have a hangover from sailor jerry from <laughs> high school that just hearing the name brought back up <laughs> don't drink when you're underage kids i've done it a lot of people have done it but damn it don't do it <laughs> Yeah, like they're going to listen to you. <laughs> hey, I'm a married man. I'm used to people not listening to me. Man. So uh, that's pretty funny. <laughs> so I got a question for you. Yeah, shoot, man. Provided you had the proper climate to grow the sugar cane for your own rum, how would you make your rum and what would you make with it to uh, – to appeal to other people? 
man, if I had to make my own rum, I would probably do it two ways. I'd probably have the first one with your clear Bacardi style rum, you know, um, nothing too crazy stuff that you can make stuff that you can make with you know, mojitos and everything. But I think my flagship, it would have to be a spiced rum. Mm -hmm. I think I would make it a little bit more potent. I would probably do it a hundred proof and, uh, and then have my blend of spices, vanilla, whatever I can get. Um, and I would market that to the two different types of people that really enjoy. I would probably eventually open up a third one uh, where it would be one of those dark rums. It would kind of follow along that Gosling rum or something similar, something darker with the molasses. But I think my flagship would have to be the spice rum. <laughs> You know, as more of the rum aficionado and expert here, there's one thing I've been seeing a lot lately with different alcohols. Hell, I was in the liquor store today. I even saw tequila with it. But I have yet to see a rum infused with coffee. A rum infused coffee. They they should do that because it, it actually does pretty well with things along those sorts you right know, it does well with desserts you know you've got your bananas fosters um you know it's got tobacco like you it's used to flavor tobacco yep so i'm um, i wonder if i can because that right there that could be you know what gets you into the market if you ever did grow your own sugar cane and start making your own rum so I flipped it. So this is rum flavored coffee and they've got it. I mean, there's ground coffee grinds and everything, but I think uh, you want coffee flavored rum, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, wait, I might've answered my own question here. Isn't Kahlua basically coffee flavored rum? No, Kahlua is uh, a vodka. You sure about that? Yeah. Like how sure? Whenever I've made it, it's always been with vodka. I thought it was a rum base. Oh, uh, let's take a look real quick though. But you might be right. But I've always made my homemade stuff with just vodka. Reading intently. Yeah, I'm trying to trying to read fast, but I'm probably skipping a bunch of shit. Yeah, it's used with a little bit of rum. So there you go, man. It it's got some rum in it. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, rum, sugar, and coffee. There we go. So, but, kind of answered your question there, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, as much Kahlua as I use when making like white Russians and stuff, you think I would have known that before? I bless. Yeah, I don't you. drink. I don't drink Kahlua or coffee, so yeah. uh, I don't do it that often. So I wouldn't even think that it's part of that drink but i did look up briefly the apparently the kraken has got black roasted coffee rum okay and then there's one that's called koala uh Kauai coffee and it's basically a coffee infused rum mm. and so so there is there is competition if you branch out that way yeah i think i would do more of the spice stuff yeah that's more up your alley anyways yeah and even if there's some competition with that um you know obviously it's all hypothetical oh yeah <laughs> i'd make mine the best rum ever oh, based yeah. off of my own tastes and i would drink the the profits i would <laughs> you're hype man for it <laughs> so um we didn't mention this in passing kind of earlier about mixing stuff with rum and you had said something about some rum desserts. You want to elaborate on some of them? Well, I mean, the first one is uh, Bananas Fosters, man. Have you ever had Bananas Fosters? Mm -mm. Essentially, you take your, uh, your bananas and you caramelize them. A little bit of some caramel, throw in some rum, light it on fire, let it kind of dissipate, and then you pour it all over some ice cream. Ooh. They have Banana Fosters, cream 
cream cheese or, or a cheesecake. They've got tons of different desserts that have some type of rum put into it. I mean, think about it. They've got rum chocolates. Yeah. I mean, I remember those, although some of those chocolate candies are a little gross. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. if you remember eating some of those and going uh that's i don't know why i'm eating this <laughs> so uh little teaser about our next episode here the uh the mother told me she's been making a key lime pie with blueberries and tequila okay and that is my plans for our next episode is to make that. And if I'm going to cover tequila, I think you should probably make a, make a rum dessert because as much as you love rum, I'm sure you got some laying around. Oh yeah, man. That's so that one bottle that I have, that's just one of them. I've got like four other ones, but I brought obviously the sailor Jerry. I mean, that's what I'm drinking right now. You can't go wrong with good old sailor and they have a pretty cool thing with what his is. I mean, his is basically, the, the old school tattoo stuff. You know, if you look at the back of the bottle, it's basically coming from this guy that they, uh, hey, they're blending it and they're giving this, this dude Norman a big uh, shout out. And then I actually got this for my birthday a couple couple years back. And I, I only drink it every now and then because it's so fancy, but it's the bumboo wine or the bumboo rum. Ooh. So it's pretty fancy on that one. And it's, uh, you know, basically distilled by hand, you know, in, in oak sherry casks. And then uh, they, they keep it pretty traditional when it comes to the Caribbean style rum. But it's a product of Panama. So it's kind of funny that they talk about that. Huh. It's really good on the rocks. Um, it's really one of the better ones, but I have mixed it with some other stuff too. And I kind of like the bottle because it actually has a cork on it. Oh, so nice. Pop that cork. And it's got a little X on the top. Marks that's for gonna, treasure, man. That's going to show up good on the uh, people who listen to us on podcast form because that pop was super clear on my headphones. So hopefully in post, <laughs> that that uh, you all get to hear that pop. Hear that, that pop. Yeah, get that product placement going. Boink. Boink. <laughs> So it's uh I'm I'm kind of curious. I didn't look up anything when it came to like pirates and rum and why that's such a huge thing. I mean, when in Rome, you know, if you're gonna be sailing the Caribbean, you might as well drink what they drink. True. I think uh I think with pirates, they wound up uh making grog from what I'm reading really quick here, or they'd cut it with some water. Okay. Because I guess the, the rum back then probably wasn't the best to drink straight up. <laughs> yeah. But I guess it meant that because a lot of times the British Navy, they were the ones that were transporting all that rum. And when the, the pirates would attack, they'd basically strip them of all their rum and take it all. So I could see why that's kind of, uh, pretty close to the reason why pirates have that association. Mm-hmm. And then I guess what g- kind of brings back to my previous thing about saying how rum was more of a currency and it sold well. So that's probably why they stole rum just so that they can sell it and make some money off of it. So I can see why that, that can be a thing. Oh, rum. So, yeah, rum. So what, what would be your favorite rum drink then? You know, you've kind of already talked about how you made your mojito today, and we've kind of talked about other ones, but what would be your go-to rum drink? I have to shout out to a uh, person that shall not be named, but uh, she got me onto this, and that was – Rum with Diet Coke and lime. The rum and diet? Okay. Yep. See, I don't like diet, man. It tastes weird. It tastes it's, funny to me. It was specifically the Diet Coke with lime in it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Not regular Diet Coke, but the one with the anti lime. Yeah. I still, I mean, it's still diet tastes funky to me. 
no, I understand you. But I mean, you could probably call that the old uh, Cuba Libre. Mm-hmm. And that's not to stop the the thing, but that's a drink, actually. Actually, yep. so it is basically your rum, coke, and and lime. Now, I haven't had like a rum mule, um, just because when I usually have the stuff to make a mule, I'd rather do either a Moscow mule or a Jameson mule. But I could see me like, oh my god! Apparently, my dog didn't like that. <laughs> <laughs> we so, have a uh, howl of disapproval. Uh, yeah, the howl of disapproval for the people that are listening at home. <laughs> hey. <laughs> so, what uh, uh so with your your uh rum mule, right? Mhm. I've I've actually heard it as a captain's mule before, but okay. I, can see, I can see why. Um Next time, if you do plan on doing it, use oranges. Instead of? Instead of lime. Okay. Yeah, they'll go together still. Use your Captain Morgan. Um, I, I use spice rum or whatever spice rum you want. Use that. Throw in your ginger beer. But before you do that, muddle in the orange and then top it with an orange slice. That orange brings some of those flavors out just a little bit more than that lime would. Uh, and it goes pretty well with that ginger beer too. So if you do it next time, get some, get an orange and, and cut that up too. I bet you you'll have a pretty good drink. I'll have to try that. Yeah. For listeners at home, uh, try that, give that a shot, go ahead and instead of doing lime, use yourself an orange. It'll taste just slightly better than just what your normal mule will be. Uh, no, I want a meal. <laughs> yeah. Well, well that's the cool thing about like, rum, though. Mojito left. Yeah, you're going to have to drink that mojito, man. Yep. Get on to your second one. Uh, yeah. I think it's going to be like a one kind of night. I got a bunch of stuff I got to do tomorrow. Uh, that's yeah. when we know you're getting old. Yeah. <laughs> I got a bunch of stuff tomorrow. I'm not going to do it hungover. So uh, it's just going to be one tonight. Yeah. Well, like I got, I plan on waking up at like six thirty in the morning. So that's not fun. Yeah. And then I got part of a tree I need to cut up for firewood, and then just like odds and ends. So. Gotcha. Yep. Um, well, I'm a uh, man. Shit. I'm trying to think of anything else that might be coming to mind with rum, but I think we might be pretty good right now. I think we've kind of covered some of those important topics and maybe people at home have have gotten a little bit of a history lesson about rum and if you want to know more about some of the other rums uh you can go to one of our other episodes it's talking about keeping it classy with drinks you know i talk about the dark and stormy talk about some other ones that are uh rum based and give a history of some of that one i can't remember what episode that is i think it's episode like nine or ten somewhere around there but Keeping it classy with classy drinks, I think is the name of that title. Yeah. So you can go back and learn more about some of our f- favorite rum drinks too, or at least my favorite rum drink. Mm-hmm. And then also don't forget, like for you people who watch on YouTube, put in the comments if you got any questions for us about rum, and then we can reply back with an answer for you. So, well, I think that kind of takes us out, man. So I think so too. Well, I'm uh, Professor Porkloin, and we are signing off to my lovely co-host here. The Meat Viking. Well, once again, this has been the Boost Dessert Smoke and Meats Podcast, or BDSM. So, signing off.